Okay guys, this is a quick exercise to make your training a little bit nicer, a little bit less frustrating. <laughs> and uh, basically this is what we're going to do. I'm going to show you a very short game, it's about 14 moves and your job is to guess every move and keep track of the ones that you get correct. At the end, you're going to use the table over here to determine your strength. So let's say that you got 5 correct, you divide by 14, multiply by 100, and that's going to give you your strength. So let's get to it. The very first move is in front of you. And actually, let me go back from the very beginning. So this game started, remember, I'm, I'm going to show you the first four moves. It's actually 18 moves in total, but I'm going to show you the first four because you're probably not familiar with the opening. So E4, C5, Sicilian defense. And then after Knight F3, we get into this unusual Sicilian defense uh, variation. So at this point, we have E5, gaining a tempo on the knight, the knight needs to move, and then knight goes to c3. Now, at this point, after the knight takes on c3, this is the first question for you. So take your time. If you need to pause the video every time, feel free to do that. And also, guys, one thing that I haven't mentioned, but I mentioned it on lesson 81, where we did something similar. If you find a move that you think is the best move, but it's not the same thing that the, this person did as a white piece as well, you could test it with the engine. And if you're correct, you could get that point. But I have to tell you, I already checked this game with the engine and this uh, strong player with the white pieces actually did the best move from this moment on. So at this point, of course, we got to get the knight but the question is should we take with the b pawn or with the d pawn i remember on lesson 120 i want to say 121 123 we had a lesson where we did a training and uh, i explained why sometimes it makes sense to take with the d pawn i know that the general rule is to take towards the center so we want to control that part of the board but in this case it makes sense to take with the d pawn because we are getting the knight and at the same time, we're opening up the bishop, we're opening up the queen. So that's exactly what the white pieces did here. So d takes e3. If you went over that lesson, you guys should, you should have known that one. Okay, so after d takes e3, we got d5. And this is another interesting one. When I do this with, uh, with my students, a lot of them say, you know what? I want to do c4 because if they trade, not only can I take their, their queen and pre prevent them from castling, but I get rid of my doubled pawns. And it does make sense, but if you look at it carefully, you're going to realize that after c4, the black pieces could easily do d4. So instead, the move that the white pieces did was e takes e6. If you're new to this channel, you have no idea what happened here, go back to lesson six, where we were learning about these special moves. So after e takes e6, we got queen to d6. And then for this next move, I know that a lot of you already made up your mind and you're going for that queen, queen takes queen. However, the best moves here are going to be either bishop e3 or bishop to d3. Now, in this game, the white pieces did bishop e3, but if you guys thought of bishop d3, I think it is only fair that you also get the point. Now, the idea is the following. Um, if you go bishop e3 and they take us, well, we already developed the bishop. Now we're going to take with the rook, developing the rook as well. Very powerful file for the rook. And we're going to continue to attack that pawn, so they have to take care of it. So this is only going to be good for, for the white pieces. And that's why after bishop e3, they just decided to do knight to c6. Just continue to develop their pieces. And of course, now we have bishop to d3. So guys, up to this point, we're almost done with the opening. Those of you who have been following these lessons in order, you should know the three principles of the opening that we learned on lesson number 24. Now, after, of course, after bishop d3, the black pieces go with pawn to e5. And I think you're already, uh, a lot of you guys already thought of your next move as white. However, I'm almost confident that nobody found this next move. And, and I'm saying this because I know it's normal to play mechanically. It only makes sense to cast with the king. And even if you didn't think of castling right away, this next move doesn't seem like, a, like it doesn't look as strong as it really is. And the next move, by the way, if you found it, let me know right now in the chat because uh, this is not easy to find. That move is actually um, knight to g5. And the thing with knight to g5 is that first, it is not as natural as just castling. Number two, it looks like a very basic uh, beginner move because we are just sending the knight out there by itself, not clear follow up. And if it gets attacked, we're going to have to move it one more time. However, here it does make perfect sense because this knight, even if they kick it out, let's say they do a move as simple as h6, there are different things you could do at this point. But even if we keep it simple and just 
retreat the knight, you could go to e4. Notice that we don't have to go back to where we came from. We can go to this very attractive square, hitting the queen is a very nice, uh, a, a very nice maneuver to improve the knight. Now, after knight g5, they decided not to do h6. Instead, bishop e7, attacking the knight, and then the following move, I think, at this point with the knight already on g5, you already thought of bringing the queen out. And this is really, really powerful. Now, the queen is hitting f7, putting pressure on h7 in case this king ever comes over. But more importantly, this is another developing move. So now the queen is not on the one. That means that the rook could occupy that square. And it's a very nice uh, file since the black queen is already there. So open file and we could win a tempo on that queen. Also, to make things even better, you could just go ahead and castle and you put the king in safety along the way. So anyways, after queen h5, of course, uh, by the way, now that we I already uh, showed you queen h5, notice that over here, even if they had done h6, queen h5 was also interesting because we're pinning the pawn on the rook. And of course, we're also putting pressure on f7. So anyways, uh, queen h5 happened. And then here, the black pieces just went with pawn h6. Now, you might be thinking, what if they did bishop g5? Well, uh, bishop g5 is actually probably the, the better move. But even in that case, after the queen takes, then we're putting pressure on g7. It continues to be uncomfortable for, for the black pieces. So instead, they decided to do g6. And now all of you should know this. Up to this point in the course, we have talked so many times about that principle that says that every time we move a pawn in chess, weaknesses are created. And that's what happened right here. Before, when the pawn was on g7, it was controlling f6, h6. The moment they pushed it, now those squares are weak and our queen could get on h6. Also, now that these pawns are, look, these pawns are on light squares. And in contrast, the dark squares are weak, right? Well, this bishop over here becomes now even more valuable for the black pieces. If they trade it, then we can say that the king side dark squares are extremely weak for for the black pieces so anyways after g6 we got queen a6 not only are we preventing the king from castling it cannot go through check but we could even get into g7 attacking the rook attacking f7 and if after queen g7 the rook goes to f8 well i think we could even do knight h7 hitting that rook so very annoying and at this point a lot of my students tell me, you know what, that's true, but it's not a big deal. My bishop could easily go back to f8 and make you move the queen. And it is true, I have to move the queen again, but notice how that bishop, instead of getting better, is going back to where it came from. Instead of developing, they're doing the opposite. And guys, this next move, don't make a big deal if you get it right, because <laughs> we don't have many options. So we have to do queen h4, and this is the only safe square that we have. So after queen h4, we got queen e7, and then the white pieces did another simple, straightforward uh, move that I wouldn't be surprised if you missed it. So they decided, okay, my knight is putting pressure on f7. Let me go bishop c4. This is a better diagonal when compared to this diagonal, and it only makes sense. Now, not long ago, lesson 122, we talked about this, uh, how we took this pattern of hitting on f7. So we learned it when we were beginners the four move checkmate. And then we took it to the next level little by little with games that I showed you uh, played by Bobby Fischer, Alekhine. But here, they're just keeping it simple. Straight to the point, I'm going to take the pawn on f7. Of course, they had knight to d8 and it solved the problem. But again, their pieces continue to get more and more passive. This is just, it just cannot be good. Look, most of their pieces are on the eighth rank. Not a good idea. Now, it's your turn. I hope that you guys have been pausing the video and I hope that you come up with the next move here for the white pieces. And that next move was simple, but I know that a lot of you are going to miss it because all of us, we go through this stage where we just get caught up in the moment when we are attacking so much. We have one, two, three, even four pieces attacking because this bishop could at some point help us do a deflection. Take on c5, deflect the queen, and then we do something on f7, right? So when we have this, uh, when we see these patterns, we tend to feel the need to sacrifice the pieces to go like crazy and attack the king. Well, sometimes all it takes is to continue to put pressure little by little and let your opponent make mistakes. Remember, they're under a lot of pressure and sometimes they're going to take drastic measures to release that pressure. So here what they did was castle queen side, we put the king in safety, but more importantly, our rook is on the only open file on the board. So after castling, we have bishop e6. And now, very simple, we got bishop takes e6, pawn takes e6. Notice that they cannot take with the queen because of the knight. 
and they cannot take with the knight because they will lose to queen a4. And now you can see the power of the rook on the open file. So if they block, we take. If they block, of course, we take. Now, one thing, guys, before we move forward, um, before, I know that a lot of you might have thought, okay, what if uh, at this point, instead of doing knight d8, what if they did bishop e6? Well, it's not a big deal. It's the same thing. We just take, and then after we castle, they're still in a lot of trouble. So going back, we have knight d8, then bishop takes e6, f takes. And now the next move is going to be also simple, but a little bit difficult to see with so many options out here. So what the white pieces did was activate the only piece that is doing nothing for the white pieces. So this rook on h1 is not doing much. Well, we're not going to bring it to the e file. Instead, they decided to double up the rook. So the rook goes to d2, then the other rook gets active right behind it. So rook d2 is the next move. And of course, you're going to get a free point here. <laughs> I hope at least. And then we have knight to c6, uh, getting the knight back into the game. And of course, we finish uh, doubling up the rooks. At this point, all of our pieces are active. We're putting a lot of pressure. That king is in the center. It only makes sense that the white pieces should win this game. Now, after doubling up the rooks, we got pawn to h6. And notice that the knight does not have to leave because there's a pin on the rook. But still, we got to be very careful with what we do next. So take your time, guys, because this next move, again, it's not that you don't have what it takes to find it. It's not that difficult. It's just that there's so many ideas, so many options that you might choose the wrong one. I wouldn't be surprised if some of you who are not that experienced think of rook d7, it looks very powerful, but we already learned on lesson, I wanna say 65, that um, two rooks could be better than a queen. So I don't think you wanna give your rooks for, for the queen. Instead, they kept it simple and they went queen to h3. And basically, they're just getting away from this pin and they're putting pressure on the weak pawn. We had a few lessons about doubled pawns, isolated pawns, and you know that isolated pawns can only be defended by pieces. So if we put pressure on them, little by little, uh, they're going to collapse. And that's what's happening here. So at this point, the black pieces resigned. And I know that it might be a little bit disappointed because you like to see how uh, to convert this position, but I have something for you in that regard. I have a bonus exercise for you. Now, before I tell you about the bonus exercise, don't forget, this exercise is to make your training a little bit more interesting. Be and, and I know that a lot of you are going to be like, you know what, uh, this is not accurate. I'm only a 1200 player and it says that I got, I'm a 2500. Well, don't forget, uh, it's just to make it fun, but also the way to see your, your strength accurately is by doing this consistently. So do it from time to time. And in the long run, you're going to see what your actual strength is but again it's not a big deal if it's accurate or not it's just a good way to spice up your your training so with that you let me know guys in the chat um what your result was remember to use this chart on top of you they uh, just divide the amount that you got correct by 14 which is the amount of moves that you guessed multiply by 100 whatever percentage you got look at the strength or the rating strength that uh, that is next to it now what is the bonus exercise I want you to try? If you went over lesson, I think 117, where we talked about converting, if you have been following this course, you should be able to capitalize. If I, let me go here. If I activate the engine, notice that it says this is an advantage of five points something. So you should be able to, to win this. Now, what you could do is if you have a friend, finish it against a friend. If you don't, then you find an engine and finish it against the engine. You could do it on any website you like. I think here on, on Leech Chess, we have used it before. If you go to Tools, you're gonna see this box. You're going to copy the moves, import, and right there you have the game, right? So up to this position, you could go to um, continue from here, play with the computer, and then you choose the level that you like. Now, if you're up for the challenge, just pick the most difficult one, pick the white pieces, and you're going to be able to finish it against the engine. So that's it, guys. I hope that you enjoyed this uh, this exercise. If you didn't, let me know that way I don't do it again. But if you did and you found value in it, don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in our next lesson.